this is Kara Tierney from Monroe Community College and in this video we are going to continue our discussion on limiting reactants introduced in the first video. What we're going to do is we're going to expand on the calculations that we did in that first video. So let's review what limiting reactant problems are. That's when we're given two amounts of reactants. Uh, and then in order to figure out how much product is formed, you need to figure out what your limiting reactant or limiting reagent is, because that is the reactant that's used up first. And this dictates how much of our product is formed. And in our questions that we answered in the last uh, video, we answered simply the question, what is our limiting reactant and how much of our product is expected to be formed. In this video, we're also going to answer a couple more questions. How much of the excess reactant remains and how much limiting reactant would be needed to be added in order to use up that excess reactant? So in order to kind of visualize these questions, let's remind ourselves of the limiting reactant problem we introduced in the last video. Remember that we talked about grilled cheese sandwiches where two pieces of bread and one piece of cheese makes up a grilled cheese sandwich. So in our limiting reactant problem we had six pieces of bread, two pieces of cheese, and we determined that these would produce two sandwiches. In this problem our excess reactant is the bread and our limiting reactant is the cheese. Now in these questions we are going to be asking more problems such as how much of our excess reactant would be left over. So in this problem we would have two pieces of bread left over. Our other question would ask how much of our limiting reactant, the cheese, would we need to add to what's left of our excess reactant in order to use up that excess reactant. So we have two pieces of bread left over, that's our excess reactant. We would just need to add one more piece of cheese to use up those two pieces of bread. So let's apply these to our problems. In order to do that, we need to keep in mind a couple things. Remember that whenever you are given the amount of two or more reactants, you first have to solve the problem by finding the limiting reactant problem, the limiting reactant. Uh, this will not change. We are solving the problems the same as before. Following that, we need to remember that if we're converting between two different substances in the equation, you have to use the coefficients from the balanced equation. These are mole to mole ratios and they're still very important. So let's take a look at problem example three. In this problem, we have 90.0 grams of FeCl3 reacting with 52.0 grams of H2S according to our reaction. We're asked how many grams of the excess reactant remain and how many grams of the limiting reactant would need to be added to use up the excess reactant. Like before, we need to start the problem exactly the same way. Step one, identify the problem as a limiting reactant problem. We know this because we have two amounts of, two of reactants given to us. Step two, then, we also need to choose a product. Uh, I'm going to pick the non-aqueous product, so we are going to be using our Fe2S3 product because it's solid. In all honesty, it doesn't matter which product you pick. Uh, this one, I just tend to pick the solid product. And then, if you recall, we need to calculate the amount of this product formed from each reactant. In the last video, we calculated uh, this amount in grams because we were asked for how many grams of the product were formed. In this video, we are only going to go to moles because we're not asked for how many grams of that product are formed. And so actually this simplifies our calculations a bit more if we stop at moles. If you go all the way to grams, honestly, it's fine. Uh, you, just might, you just have an extra step in going between grams and moles. So it's not a big deal if you go to grams. Now, since we did this in the last video, I want you to pause this video and try and start this problem. See how far you can get. Do you remember how to find the limiting reactant? Uh, press play when you think you have the limiting reactant. So let's go through this uh, problem of finding what is our limiting reactant. We're going to, once again, pick our product. That was the Fe2S3. And so we're going to figure out how much of that product we get from each of our reactants. Uh, to start off, we have our 90.0 grams of FeCl3. Uh, we're going to 
get rid of our grams of that and convert that into moles using our molar mass. Hopefully you know how to find the molar mass by this point. Our molar mass is 162.2 grams per mole. So we're going to divide by 162.2 grams per mole. Now we're going to go from moles of FeCl3 and we're going to convert this into moles of our product which is F E2S3 and we're going to use our mole to mole ratio. So we see this has a coefficient of 1 and our FeCl3 has a coefficient of 2. Our grams of FeCl3 cancel out and our moles cancel out. And I'm just going to stop at moles. You can go on to grams if you want, but this is going to make our calculation shorter and who doesn't like a shorter calculation. So when you do that, you find out that we get 0.277 moles of our Fe2S3. All right, so now remember, second thing we do, we find the exact same thing using the other amount. So we're going to start off with our 52.2 grams of our H2S, and we're going to do the same thing. We're going to convert that from grams of H2S into moles of H2S. Our molar mass of H2S is 34.086. 34.086 grams per mole. Cancel out our grams of H2S. All right, now we're going to go from moles of H2S into moles of the same product, Fe2S3. All right, let's look at our multiple ratio once again. Our Fe2S3 has a coefficient of 1, and H2S has a coefficient of 3. So if we calculate how many moles of Fe2S3 that is, we get 0 0.509 moles of Fe2S3. Now, step four, compare to determine the limiting reactant. We compare these two amounts we just calculated, 0 0.277, 0 0.509, which is smaller than 0 0.277. That's how much product we are forming. That means that our FeCl3 is our limiting reactant. So keep that in mind. All right, so now we're going to move on to the actual questions that are asked in this problem. How many grams of the excess reactant remain and how many grams of the limiting reactant would be needed to be added in order to use up the excess reactant? So in order to do that, let's look back at our old problem with the grilled cheese. The first question is, how much of our excess reactant remains? How we figure that out is we start off with our six pieces of bread and we use up four pieces of bread in order to make those two sandwiches. So our six that we start off with minus the four that we used equals two left over. And that's the basic formula of what we need to do to figure this out. We take our starting point, we subtract from that how much was used, and that gives us a, the remaining excess reactant or what is left over. So the start, that is given to us. Remember that. Uh, let's look back. Our FeCl3, this was our limiting reactant. So we are asked for the grams of the excess reactant. That is the H2S. So we start off with 52.0 grams. Very important to keep track of what's your limiting reactant, what's your excess reactant. Uh, what is used? Well, we are going to figure how, out how much is used uh, using the amount of product form. So we're going to find using the amount of product formed, which we found in the last step. And we're going to subtract those two to give us how much excess reactant is left over. 
So let's find the amount of our H2S that's actually used up. So we had 52.0 grams added to the reaction, but only some of it reacted. And the part that reacted ended up giving us 0.277 moles of our product, Fe2S3. So this is what we're going to use in order to find how much of our H2S was reacted. So we are going to do a mole to mole ratio of our Fe2S3 to what we're interested in is the H2S. So let's look at that mole to mole ratio. It looks like it's a three to one ratio. And of course, we are asked for grams that remain. So we're gonna find this amount in grams so that we can do a subtraction only using grams. So we're gonna go from moles of our H2S to grams of H2S using our molar mass. Our molar mass is 34.086. Sorry, I didn't leave enough room there. Our moles of Fe2S3 cancel out. Our moles of H2S cancel out. That gives us, uh, let's see, 28.3 grams of H2S were used in this reaction. So that means if we take our 52.0 grams and we subtract what was used, our 28.3 grams, that's going to give us the amount that's left over, which is 23.7 grams H2S that is left over or remains. And that's our answer to part A of this question. Now let's take a look at part B. Part B asks us, how many grams of the limiting reactant would need to be added to use up the excess reactant? Let's take a look at what this relates to in grilled cheeses. What this means is we have two pieces of bread left over. How much of our limiting reactant, the cheese, would needed to be added to use up these two pieces of bread? Well, we know it's a two to one ratio, so we just need one piece of cheese in order to use those up. So let's do this in example three. How many grams of the limiting reagent would need to be added to use up the excess reactant? We know that we have 23.7 grams of H2S that is in excess. So that's what we are going to start off with. And we want to find the amount of limiting reactant. Remember our FeCl3 is the limiting reactant. So we're gonna go from grams of H2S to grams of FeCl3, starting off with the amount that's left over. So this is just another stoichiometry problem. So we're gonna start off with our 23.7 grams of H2S. We're going to go from grams of H2S to moles of H2S using molar mass. And our molar mass of H2S is 34.086. I feel like I'm getting this a little memorized right now. All right, so that gets rid of our grams of H2S. Now we're going to do our mole to mole ratio and we're going to want to end up with FeCl3. Looks like we have a ratio of two to three, and that cancels out our moles of H2S. And we're finally going to end up with moles of FeCl3, and we want to end up with grams of FeCl3. Our molar mass of FeCl3, if you recall, was 162.2. And we can cancel out our moles of FeCl3. When we calculate that out, that gives us 75.2 grams of FeCl3 needed to be added in order to use up 
the 23.7 grams of H2S that was left over. And that's how you do those problems. So I want you to practice this now with problem example four, or your turn, I guess is what I called it. Uh, you have 15.00 grams of aluminum sulfide and 10.00 grams of water, and they react until the limiting reagent is used up, according to the balanced equation shown below. You're gonna answer three questions. The first two, uh, were what we did in the first video. Find the limiting reactant and find the maximum amount of H2S, the product that can be formed from these reagents. Uh, and then third is what we did in this video. I want you to figure out how much excess reagent remains after the reaction is complete. Uh, see how far you can get into the problem. We're gonna go over this as a class and I look forward to your questions there.